Hello, my name is Scott with Sean's Photography, and today we're going to go over the Cheetah Stand CL600X. This is going to be the first product that I'm going to go over in the Cheetah Stand X system line. Here we're going to go over the menu in the LCD screen first. Here you can see we have our radio. This is showing that we're in radio. Here we are in manual. Ed will not be selling the TTTL version, so the only one you're going to see is with the M on here. Here we have the speaker. This is for the beep sound that goes off after every recycle. Over here we have the battery indicator. And this is going to go show you how much power you have left in your system. Here we have group A. So this shows you that we are in group A. Channel 1. And we are at 164th power plus 0.7. Now let's go into our, our buttons, our select buttons here. So the first one we're going to go over to is our wireless select button. This one here is going to change this from the built-in 2.4 gigahertz system to the USB or our sync port. So to get out of there, we're going to go back into the 2.4 gigahertz system because you're going to be running usually the X1 with this anyway. Let's go into our mode button. Our mode button switches from manual to multiple. Multiple is stroboscopic, so if you want to do uh, long shutter speeds and you want the flash to go off and you're doing some dance sequence or a skateboarder or something that's moving and you want multiple pictures in that one shot, this is where you're going to use this. Now what you're going to do is you're going to select your hertz by pushing the button and you're going to adjust your hertz. And you press it again, that's going to change you into how many flashes there are. And just by selecting the dial, that's going to change us to our power settings. So let's go back out of uh, multiple, back into manual. Same way with this dial, this is where we're going to switch our power settings. We do not have to hit the center button for OK for this, we just leave it like that. Let's go into our group and channel button that's right over here. Right now we're in group A. By pushing it, we're going to go into group B, group C, group D, group E, and back to A. Now if we want to get to channels, we have to hold this button down. Now we are in our channels, and we'll use our selector over here to adjust through our channels. So we can go all the way up to 32 channels, back down to 1. It's a lot easier to adjust your channels on this than it is when you start getting into the um, X1 receiver. So now we're still on channel one and channel uh, channel one and group A. Okay, now we're going to go on to the menu button. Here we are in the menu, our custom functions. Here we can turn the beep on and turn the beep off. You can do that remotely now with the new firmware update in the X1, and you can use uh, the XT16 or the old CLTX to turn the um, audio on. Let's go to the next one. Here we have Slave. We have Off, Slave 1, and Slave 2. Slave 1 is for strobes. Slave 2 is for speed lights that have a pre-flash. Here we go into Fan. We can shut it to off or we can shut it to auto. i rather leave mine on auto just so that I know that um, if it gets hot, too hot, I want it to cool itself down. Here we are in sleep mode. This determines when this strobe is going to go to sleep and to save consumption on the battery. Mine right now is set to one hour. If I'm not using it in one hour, the strobe will shut off. All right, so now we are here in light. Light is the display brightness, I mean the light on the display. You can set it to off. So let's go back up here and press the OK button and now it's shut off. We can turn it on and then we can put it to a delay of uh, 12 seconds. But I'd rather just leave mine on. So let's go back to here. Let's go to the next one. This one here is delay. 
Now delay is for like if you're using type of second curtain sync type of setup. This is where you're going to set your uh, timing in here. So, and we're going to adjust how many milliseconds we're going to have here. Again, I don't do any of that, so I'm just going to leave mine to off. Let's go over here to units. You got units. You have mat or two mask, three alt, uh, alt, and four alt. Again. I just leave mine on two masks because <clears throat> I don't really need to set the timing on the X1 with this unit for what I shoot with. Same way with Alt. Um, alt is just determines uh, the trigger timing before the flash fires. Um, again, that's something I just don't use because the X1 is synced properly with the uh, flash. And if I'm doing some kind of special effects, then I might go into that. But again, I don't do any of that stuff anyway. Let's go to the next one. Here we are in LCD. This is what changes the contrast um, on the back screen. So it can go from, and it's kind of hard to see from this angle because uh, we're right above it. And now I just lost where I was at um, right here. Because I can't see it from where I'm sitting at now, but you can phys physically see it. But it changes kind of the angle of how you can see this um, LCD display. So I just leave mine at 9, so then that way I can see it from kind of any angle. Here is reset. If you want to go back to factory reset, then you just hit yes. And then it just takes out all the settings you did in your custom functions and everything else that you have on your system. So if you're having some defects or any problems, then you might want to just uh, hit the reset button or here, and then it might fix that problem if you're trying to troubleshoot something. So let's just go out of the menu button. Here we have our high speed sync button over here. and we are in multiple so that ain't gonna help me let's go into high speed sync so now our high speed sync icon shows up when your camera goes over 250 of a second the X1 is gonna notify that it's going to jump it into high speed sync anyway here we have um, let's take off this cap cover here real quick So let's pull this protective cap cover off all right so let's get this out of the way. Here we have our modeling light button. Here is the one, and it actually says the lowest setting is one. Then it goes to two. Then it goes to three. Um, between this one and the CL6, the old CL600, I'm rating this more at a 50 watt bulb compared to the one that was on the CL600 before was rated 100 watt bulb so it's a little less brightness but again this one's on a different battery setup where um, this one has less of a a power battery than the other one so this the other one stored more battery power than this one here this one over here is your on and off switch so let's shut this off so you hold it in to turn it off. If you want to turn it back on, just like the old CL600, you have to hold it in and wait for it to pop on, and then it stays on. It just doesn't automatically turn on by just hitting the um, on and off switch. The next one over here is we have our flash button, our test fire button. So let me test fire. Let me turn this all the way down because I'm right in front of it. Turn this all the way down. That is at the lowest setting. Uh, let's go up to one quarter and hit the next one. You can see how fast it recycles. And it's not on a full charge on the battery. Um, let's go to half. Now let's go into full power. Better close my eyes on this one.
All right. So now let's start going into the rest of the rest of the unit. Okay, I changed my lighting up a little bit. We're going to go over the outside of the unit. Of course, we already went over through the menu system, so let's flip this to the bottom. So now we flipped it to the bottom. Here is our fan. We want to try to keep from blocking this because this is what's going to cool the system. Um, again, on version two, the it kind of rubs against here, but not as bad as it used to. So I can actually loosen this up and lock it down without it interfering with the side of this. You can hear that this is ratcheted. That aids and help from. Uh, it just dropping down when this is a little bit loose and you didn't realize that this uh, locking system went loose this ratchet kind of saves you inside this all plastic spigot here actually has an aluminum alloy insert like the Allen chrome so that makes it more durable when it's on your spigot uh, one thing I do not like is the locking um, locking screw it looks like a little toy on this and it's really dinky um, I'm going to change mine out and maybe Edward will change these out before you get these. Over here we have our lock release for the battery. Basically you just pull it outwards and it drops down the battery. Simple and easy. Let's flip it to the side here. And here's our exhaust port. Try not to cover that as well. That uh, you don't want the unit to overheat at any time. Uh, this little guy is seven pounds and uh, again that's with the battery. If you take the battery off it's going to be a lot lighter to ship back if you have to ship it back for repairs. Um, this here's our locking system for our Bowen. We just pull it back. The unit comes off the front really easy. Um, when it's in the bag um, and you're using the handheld unit you're going to have to reach into the bag and kind of find this. With it out like this, you can, it's easy to see and easy to get to. Let's flip it to the top. Um, these are uh, pretty well weathered sealed uh, little covers. This one here is for your USB and this is for your 8th inch uh, sink port jack. Um, they're kind of a pain to lift up. But once they get broken in, they're a little bit easier. These are fresh and brand new, and um, I'm just not even going to try lifting them up. This is your optical slave um, up here. So this captures any flashes and signals the CL600 to flash. Here is your battery indicator over here. So this tells you how much juice you have in the system. Over here, which is a lot easier to get to, is the actual charging port for the unit, for the battery. Again, this is the Cheetah Stand CL600X. My name is Scott with Sean Photography, and thank you for watching.